A V6 engine is a V engine with six cylinders mounted on the crankshaft in two banks of three cylinders, usually set at a 60 or 90 degree angle to each other. The V6 is one of the most compact engine configurations, usually ranging from 2.0L to 4.3L displacement, and it is shorter than the inline four. Because of its short length, the V6 fits well in the widely used transverse engine front wheel drive layout. Topic. Applications The V6 is commercially successful in contemporary midsize cars because it is less expensive to build and is smoother in large sizes than the inline 4, which develops increasingly serious vibration problems in larger engines. The wider 90 degrees V6 will fit in an engine compartment designed for a V8, providing a low-cost alternative to the V8 in an expensive car, while the narrower 60 degrees V6 will fit in most engine compartments designed for an I4, proving a more powerful and smoother alternative engine to the 4. Buyers of luxury and or performance cars might prefer an inline 6, which has better smoothness, or a flat 6 which has a lower center of gravity. Recent forced induction V6 engines have delivered horsepower and torque output comparable to contemporary larger displacement, naturally aspirated V8 engines, while reducing fuel consumption and emissions, such as the Volkswagen Group's 3.0 TFSI which is supercharged and directly injected, and Ford Motor Company's turbocharged and directly injected EcoBoost V6, both of which have been compared to Volkswagen's 4.2 V8 engine. Modern V6 engines commonly range in displacement from 2.0 to 4.3L 120 to 260 cu in, though larger and smaller examples have been produced, such as the 1991 Mazda MX-3, and the Rover KV-6 engine. History Some of the first V6-powered automobiles were built in 1905 by Marmon. This firm became something of a V engine specialist, even producing, in the 1930s, a V16 engine, as one of the few automakers in the world. From 1908 to 1913, the Deutz Gasmotoren fabric produced gasoline electric train sets hybrid, which used a V6 as generator engine. In 1918 Leo Goosen designed a V6-powered car for Buick chief engineer Walter L. Maher. Only one prototype Buick V6 car was built in 1918, it was long used by the Maher family. The first series production V6 was introduced by Lancia in 1950 with the Lancia Aurelia model. Lancia sought a smoother and more powerful engine that would fit into an existing narrow engine bay. Lancia engineer Francesco de Virgilio began analyzing the vibration of alternative V angles for a V6 engine in 1943. He found that a V6 with its cylinders positioned at a 60 degrees V angle could be made uniquely smooth running in comparison with other possible V angles. There was resistance to his conclusion because the V6 was a virtually unknown engine type in the 1950s. His design featured four main bearings and six crankpins, resulting in evenly spaced firing intervals and low vibrations. Other manufacturers took note and soon other V6 engines were designed. In 1959, General Motors GMC truck division introduced a new 60 degree heavy duty 305 in 3 5.0L gasoline fueled 60 degrees V6 for use in their pickup trucks and suburbans. This engine design was later enlarged to 478 in 3 7.8L for heavy truck and bus use. The use of the sweet spot of 60 degrees V angle maximized power while minimizing vibration and exterior dimensions of the engine. In short, GMC introduced a compact V6 design at a time when the straight six engine was considered the pinnacle of six cylinder design. 1962 saw the introduction of the Buick Special, which offered a new 90 degrees V6 with uneven firing intervals, that was derived from and shared some parts with a small Buick V8 engine of the period. To save design time and expense, it was built much like a V8 that had two fewer cylinders. The combination of a 90 degrees V angle with only three crank pins set at 120 degrees apart, with opposing cylinders sharing a crank pin as most V8 engines do the cylinders fired alternatively at 90 and 150 degrees of crankshaft rotation. This uneven firing caused harmonic vibrations in the drivetrain that were perceived as a rough running engine by the buyers. GM sold the engine tooling to Kaiser Jeep in 1967. Later, as a result of the 1973 oil crisis, GM repurchased the tooling in 1974. 
In 1977, Buick introduced a split pin crankshaft to implement an even fire version of this engine in which cylinders fired consistently every 120 degrees. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Balance and smoothness. The V6 does not have the inherent freedom from vibration that the inline 6 and flat 6 have, but it can be modeled as two separate straight three engines sharing a crankshaft. Counterweights on the crankshaft and a counter-rotating balance shaft are required to compensate for the first order rocking motions. Straight engines with an odd number of cylinders are inherently unbalanced because there is always an odd number of pistons moving in one direction while a different number move the opposite direction. This causes an end-to-end -end rocking motion at crankshaft speed in a straight three engine. V6 designs will behave like two unbalanced three-cylinder engines running on the same crankshaft unless steps are taken to mitigate it, for instance by using offset journals or flying arms on the crankshaft or a counter-rotating balance shaft. In the V6 with 120 degrees between banks, pairs of connecting rods can share a single crank pin, but the two-cylinder banks run like two inline threes, both having an end-to-end -end rocking couple. Unlike in a V8 engine with a crossplane crankshaft, the vibrations from one bank do not cancel the vibrations from the other, so a rotating balancing shaft is required to compensate for the primary vibrations. Because the 120 degrees V6 is nearly as wide as a 180 degrees flat 6 but is not nearly as smooth, and can be more expensive if a balancing shaft is added, this configuration is seldom seen in production engines. In the V6 with 90 degrees between cylinders, split crank pins are required to offset the connecting rods by 30 degrees to achieve an even 120 degrees between firing intervals, and crankshaft counterweights are required to offset the primary imbalances. In the 90 degrees V6, a balancing shaft is desirable but not entirely necessary to minimize second-order vibrations, depending on the level of smoothness required. The main advantage of the 90 degrees V6 is that it can easily be derived from an existing 90 degrees V8 design, and use the same parts as the V8, but without the same ability to counteract vibration that a 90 degrees crossplane V8 engine has, due to the odd number of pistons in each bank that result, without any additional compensation, in uneven firing intervals and due to being without two of the heavy counterweights on the crankshaft that offset the rocking motion. A simple 90 degrees V6 cannot achieve the same smoothness with only crankshaft counterweights, and if the 90 degrees V6 uses shared crankpins like the V8, the engine will have uneven firing intervals, such as in the original, odd fire, Buick V6 engine. This uneven firing interval results in roughness at idle and low RPM, and varying harmonics at higher engine speeds, making the odd fire. Configuration unpopular with buyers, so most manufacturers now use split crankpins to make the firing intervals an even 120 degrees. Therefore, designing a smooth V6 engine is a much more complicated problem than the straight 6, flat 6, and V8 layouts. Although the use of offset crankpins, counterweights, and flying arms has reduced the problem to a minor second-order vibration in modern designs, all V6 can benefit from the addition of auxiliary balance shafts to make them completely smooth. When Lancia pioneered the 60 degrees V6 in 1950, they used a 60 degrees angle between the cylinder banks and a six-throw crankshaft to achieve equally spaced firing intervals of 120 degrees. This still has some balance and secondary vibration problems. When Buick designed a 90 degrees V6 based on their 90 degrees V8, they initially used a simpler three-throw crankshaft laid out in the same manner as the V8 with pairs of connecting rods sharing the same crankpin, which resulted in firing intervals alternating between 90 degrees and 150 degrees. This produced a rough running design which was unacceptable to many customers. Arguably, the roughness is in the exhaust note, rather than noticeable vibration, so the perceived smoothness is rather good at higher RPM. Later, Buick and other manufacturers refined the design by using a split-pin crankshaft which achieved a regular 120 degrees firing interval by staggering adjacent crankpins by 15 degrees in opposite directions to eliminate the uneven firing and make the engine reasonably smooth. Some manufacturers such as Buick in later versions of their V6 and Mercedes-Benz have taken the 90 degrees design a step further by adding a balancing shaft to offset the primary vibrations and produce an almost fully balanced engine. Some designers have reverted to a 60 degrees angle between cylinder banks, which produces a more compact engine, but have used three throw crankshafts with flying arms between the crankpins of each throw to achieve even 120 degrees angles between firing intervals. 
This has the additional advantage that the flying arms can be weighted for balancing purposes. This still leaves an unbalanced primary couple, which is offset by counterweights on the crankshaft and flywheel to leave a small secondary couple, which can be absorbed by carefully designed engine mounts. Six cylinder designs are also more suitable for larger displacement engines than four cylinder ones because power strokes of pistons overlap. In a four cylinder engine, only one piston is on a power stroke at any given time. Each piston comes to a complete stop and reverses direction before the next one starts its power stroke, which results in a gap between power strokes and annoying harshness, especially at lower revolutions. In a six-cylinder engine other than odd firing V6, the next piston starts its power stroke 60 degrees before the previous one finishes, which results in smoother delivery of power to the flywheel. In addition, because inertial forces are proportional to piston displacement, high-speed six-cylinder engines will suffer less stress and vibration per piston than an equal displacement engine with fewer cylinders. Comparing engines on the dynamometer, a typical even fire V6 shows instantaneous torque peaks of 150% above mean torque and valleys of 125% below mean torque, with a small amount of negative torque, engine torque reversals between power strokes. On the other hand, a typical four-cylinder engine shows peaks of nearly 300% above mean torque and valleys of 200% below mean torque, with 100% negative torque being delivered between strokes. In contrast, a V8 engine shows peaks of less than 100% above and valleys of less than 100% below mean torque, and torque never goes negative. The even fire V6 thus ranks between the 4 and the V8, but closer to the V8, in the smoothness of power delivery. An odd fire V6, on the other hand, shows highly irregular torque variations of 200% above and 175% below mean torque, which is significantly worse than an even fire V6, and in addition, the power delivery shows large harmonic vibrations that have been known to destroy the dynamometer. V angles Topic: 60 degrees. A V6 engine with a 60 degree included angle between cylinder banks hits the sweet spot in V6 engine design due to several desirable characteristics. Unlike most other V6 layouts, 60 degree engines can be made acceptably smooth without using a balance shaft. Although the engine will not be as smooth running as an inline six or opposed six cylinder engine, modern design and mounting techniques can eliminate objectionable vibration. In the 60 degree design, the connecting rods are attached to individual crankpins, which are angularly displaced at 60 degree intervals. This geometry results in an even firing interval, eliminating primary vibration and reducing secondary vibration to acceptable levels. Lancia's pioneering design in 1950 utilized a six-throw crankshaft to achieve the required 60-degree angular displacement between crankpins. The GMC V6 engine, designed for commercial vehicles, also used a six-throw crankshaft, and was intentionally made physically massive in order to further damp vibration, as well as to enhance durability. However, more recent designs often use a three-throw crankshaft with what are termed flying arms between the crankpins, which not only produce the required angular crankpin displacement, but also can be used for balancing purposes. Combined with a pair of heavy counterweights on the crankshaft ends, flying arms can eliminate all but a modest secondary imbalance, which can readily be dampened by the engine mounts. The 60 degree design is one of the most compact engine layouts, being nearly a perfect cube that will fit longitudinally or transversely in most engine compartments. Hence, the 60 degree configuration is a good fit in automobiles which are too large to be powered by four cylinder engines, but in which compactness and low cost are important considerations. The most common 60-degree V6 were produced by General Motors the aforementioned GMC commercial engine, as well as a design used in many GM front-wheel drive automobiles and Ford European subsidiaries Essex V6, Cologne V6 and the more recent Duratec V6. Other 60-degree V6 engines are the Chrysler 3.3 engine, the Honda J engine, the Nissan VQ engine, the Mazda K engine, the Alfa Romeo V6 engine, the Mitsubishi 6G7 series of engines, many Toyota V6 engines and later versions of the Mercedes-Benz V6 M276 engine. Topic: 90 degrees. 
Many manufacturers, particularly American ones, built V6 engines with an angle of 90 degrees because they already had a successful V8 and needed to create a smaller, lighter engine with better fuel economy to meet market demand. Such configurations were easy to design by removing two cylinders from an existing V8 engine design. In some cases, the first prototypes were created by simply sawing two cylinders out of a V8 engine, welding the block back together, and forging a three-throw crankshaft to replace the V8 four-throw crank. This reduced design costs, allowed the new V6 to share components with the old V8, and sometimes allowed manufacturers to build V6 on the same production line as V8s. Although it was relatively easy to create a 90 degrees V6 by simply removing two cylinders from an existing V8 engine, this produced an engine which was wider and more vibration prone than a 60 degrees V6. The design was first used by Buick when it introduced its 198 SID Fireball V6 as the standard engine in the 1962 special. The Buick V6 was notable because it had uneven firing intervals between power strokes as a result of using the 90 degrees cylinder bank angle and sharing crankpins between piston pairs as in the V8 engine. Rather than firing evenly every 120 degrees of crankshaft rotation, the cylinders fired alternately at 90 degrees and 150 degrees, resulting in strong harmonic vibrations at certain engine speeds. These engines were often referred to by mechanics as shakers due to the tendency of the engine to vibrate at idle speed. Other examples included the Maserati V6 used in the Citroen SM, the PRV V6, the Honda C engine used in the NSX, Chevrolet's 4.3L Vortec 4300 and Chrysler's 3.9L Magnum V6 and 3.7L Powertech V6. More modern 90 degrees V6 engine designs avoid these vibration problems by using more sophisticated crankshafts with split crankpins offset by 30 degrees between piston pairs to make the firing intervals and even 120 degrees the Rover KV6 2.0 and 2.5 liter. They often add balancing shafts to eliminate the other vibration problems inherent in the layer. Examples include the later versions of the Buick V6, Chevrolet Vortec 4300, and earlier versions of the Mercedes-Benz V6 M112, M272. The 90 degrees Mercedes V6, although it was designed to be built on the same assembly lines as the V8, used split crankpins, a counter-rotating balancing shaft, and careful acoustic design to make it almost as smooth as the inline 6 it replaced. However, in later versions Mercedes changed the cylinder banks to a 60 degrees angle to make the engine more compact and eliminate the balancing shaft. Despite the difference in V angles, Mercedes modified its production lines so it could build 60 degrees V6 on the same assembly lines as 90 degrees V8s. Topic: <laughs> Later versions At first glance, 120 degrees might be considered the natural angle for a V6 since pairs of pistons in alternate banks can share crank pins in a three-throw crankshaft, and the cylinders will fire evenly every 120 degrees of crankshaft rotation. Unlike the 60 degrees or 90 degrees configurations, it does not require crankshafts with flying arms, split crankpins, or seven main bearings to be even firing. This is equivalent to the 90 degrees V8 in which cylinders fire every 90 degrees. However, in the 120 degrees V6 there is a primary dynamic imbalance caused by the fact there are an odd number of cylinders in each bank. At any given time in, each bank, two cylinders will be moving up while one moves down, and vice versa. Each cylinder bank acts like a straight three and experiences a strong vibration at crankshaft speed. By contrast, in the 90 degrees V8 engine with a simple flat plane crankshaft, each cylinder bank acts like a straight four, which is much smoother than a straight three. In addition, in 1915 the crossplane crankshaft was invented, which allowed the secondary vibrations from one cylinder bank of a V8 to cancel those from the other cylinder bank. This resulted in an almost perfectly smooth V8 engine which has been popular in luxury and sports cars since 1923. Unfortunately, the crossplane crankshaft does not work for the V6. There is no way to arrange the 120 degrees V6 so that unbalanced forces from the two cylinder banks will completely cancel each other. As a result, the 120 degrees V6 acts like two straight minus threes running on the same crankshaft and suffers from a primary dynamic vibration which requires a balanced shaft to cancel. 
This has limited its use to trucks and racing cars where vibration is not as important as in passenger cars. The 120 degrees layout also produces an engine which is too wide for most automobile engine compartments, so it is more often used in racing cars where the car is designed around the engine rather than vice versa, and lightweight and low center of gravity are major considerations. By comparison, the 180 degrees flat six boxer engine is only moderately wider than the 120 degrees V6, and is an almost fully balanced configuration with few vibration problems. It can be scaled up to very large and powerful configurations, so it has been commonly used in aircraft and in sports, luxury cars where space is not a constraint, but power and smoothness are important. Spanish truck manufacturer Pegaso built the first production 120 degrees V6 for the Z207 midsize truck in 1955. The engine, a 7.5-liter alloy diesel designed under the direction of engineer Wifredo Ricart uses a single balance shaft rotating at the speed of the crankshaft Ferrari introduced a very successful 120 degrees V6 racing engine in 1961. The Ferrari Dino 156 engine was shorter and lighter than the 65 degrees Ferrari V6 engines that preceded it, and the simplicity and low center of gravity of the engine was an advantage in racing. It won a large number of Formula One races between 1961 and 1964. However, Enzo Ferrari had a personal dislike of the 120 degrees V6 layout, preferring a 65 degrees angle, and after that time it was replaced by other engines. Bombardier designed 120 degrees V220, V300 TV6 engines for use in light aircraft. A balance shaft on the bottom of the engine offset the primary dynamic imbalance. However, it was costly, the market was small, and it had no overwhelming advantages over the 180 degrees flat six engines already in common use in light planes. The design was shelved in 2006 and there are no plans for production. <laughs> <laughs> Narrow angle VR6 Volkswagen's VR6 engines are a family of V6 engines characterized by extremely narrow angle 10.5 degrees or 15 degrees V configurations. These engines were developed in the late 1980s for transverse engine installations in its front wheel drive vehicles, which were originally designed for straight four engines. The wider configuration of a wider angle V6 engine would have required an extensive redesign to enlarge the engine compartment, but the narrow angle of 15 degrees and later 10.5 degrees between the two cylinder banks in the VR6 engine made it much narrower than other V6 designs. The VR6 engine is only moderately longer and wider than a straight four engine but has 50% greater engine displacement. The VR6 engine is also smoother than most V6 without balance shafts. It uses a firing order of 1, 5, 3, 6, 2, 4 similar to a straight 6 rather than a more typical V6 firing order like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. In terms of balance and smoothness the VR6 acts more like a staggered cylinder straight 6 rather than a conventional V6. The narrow angle between cylinders allows the use of just one cylinder head that covers both cylinder banks, whereas wider angle V engines require two separate cylinder heads, one for each cylinder bank. The VR6 arrangement has twin SOHC valve gear operating the 24 valves via rocker arms, it is not a true DOHC design. This simplifies engine construction and reduces costs. Since there is no room in the V between the cylinder banks for an intake system, all the intakes are on one side of the engine, and all the exhausts are on the other side. This system is efficient and simplifies installation into the engine compartment. The Volkswagen VR6 was originally designed as a 2.8 liter engine, but some versions have been built as large as 3.6 liters in size. In addition to Volkswagen, VR6 engines have also been used by Audi and Porsche, although Audi also uses its own designs of wider angle V6. Some other manufacturers have also used VR6 engines in their vehicles. Other angles Other angle V6 engines are possible but can suffer from severe vibration problems unless very carefully designed. Notable V6 bank angles include 
the 45 degrees electro-motive 6, 8, 12, 16 and 20 cylinder versions of their 567 series, 645 series and 710 series locomotive, marine and stationary diesel engines. This angle is optimum for the more common 8 and 16 cylinder versions. In all of these engines, directly opposite cylinders always fire 45 degrees apart, so engines other than 8 and 16 cylinder versions are uneven firing. Six cylinder engines were only made in the 567 and 645 series, 20 cylinder engines were only made in the 645 and 710 series. The 54 degrees GM, Opel V6, designed to be narrower than normal for use in small front wheel drive cars. The 65 degrees Ferrari Dino V6, allowing larger carburetors for potentially higher power in race tuning than a 60 degrees angle and having crankpins with a 115 degree offset to get the same level of vibration as in a 60 degree V6, while having an even firing order. The 65 degrees Renault V6 diesel named V9X, has a 65 degrees bank angle for easier installation of turbocharger inside the V. The 72 degrees Mercedes-Benz Bluetech diesel V6 utilizes a counter-rotating balance shaft and crank pins offset by 48 degrees to eliminate vibration problems and make the engine even firing. The 75 degrees Isuzu V engine used in the Isuzu Rodeo and Isuzu Trooper of 3.2 and 3.5L in both SOHC and DOHC versions. Honda also introduced a 75 degrees V6 engine in the second generation Honda NSX. The 80 degrees Honda RA168E Formula 1 engine in the McLaren MP4 quarters. Topic: <inaudible> Odd and even firing. Many older V6 engines were based on V8 engine designs in which a pair of cylinders was cut off the front of V8 without altering the V angle or using a more sophisticated crankshaft to even out the firing interval. Most V8 engines share a common crankpin between opposite cylinders in each bank, and a 90 degrees V8 crankshaft has just four pins shared by eight cylinders, with two pistons per crankpin, allowing a cylinder to fire every 90 degrees to achieve smooth operation. Early 90 degrees V6 engines derived from V8 engines had three shared crankpins arranged at 120 degrees from each other. Since the cylinder banks were arranged at 90 degrees to each other, this resulted in a firing pattern with groups of two cylinders separated by 90 degrees of rotation, and groups separated by 150 degrees of rotation, causing a notorious odd firing behavior, with cylinders firing at alternating 90 degrees and 150 degrees intervals. The uneven firing intervals resulted in rough running engines with unpleasant harmonic vibrations at certain engine speeds. An example is the Buick 231 odd fire, which has a firing order 1 6 5 4 3 2. As the crankshaft is rotated through the 720 degrees required for all cylinders to fire, the following events occur on 30 degrees boundaries. Note that the firing order is not solely dictated by the odd or even firing arrangement of the engine, it is an engine-specific design choice. More modern 90 degrees V6 engines avoid this problem by using split crankpins, with adjacent crankpins offset by 15 degrees in opposite directions to achieve an even 120 degrees ignition pattern. Such a split crankpin is weaker than a straight one, but modern metallurgical techniques can produce a crankshaft that is adequately strong. In 1977, Buick introduced the new split pin crankshaft in the 231. Using a crankpin that is split and offset by 30 degrees of rotation resulted in smooth, even firing every 120 degrees. However, in 1978 Chevrolet introduced a 90 degrees 200 and 229 V6, which had a compromise semi-even firing design using a crankpin that was offset by only 18 degrees. This resulted in cylinders firing at 108 degrees and 132 degrees, which had the advantage of reducing vibrations to a more acceptable level and did not require strengthening the crankshaft. In 1985, Chevrolet's 4.3 changed it to a true even firing V6 with a 30 degrees offset, requiring larger crank journals to make them adequately strong. In 1986, the similarly designed 90 degrees PRV engine adopted the same 30 degrees crankshaft offset design to even out its firing. 
In 1988, Buick introduced a V6 engine that not only had split crankpins, but had a counter-rotating balancing shaft between the cylinder banks to eliminate almost all primary and secondary vibrations, resulting in a very smooth running engine. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Racing use. Lancia introduced the V6 engine in the early 1950s, and good results were achieved with the privately entered Aurelia. Lancia launched a works competition department in 1951. Four B20 coupes were entered in the 51 mil Maglia, and the one driven by Giovanni Bracco and Umberto Malioli caused quite a stir by finishing second overall, trailing only a 4.1 litre Ferrari with three times more power than the Lancia. Lancia's endurance racing program continued first with specially prepared Aurelias called Dark Corsa, and then with specially built prototypes. A D24 with a 3,102 cc 189 cu in V6 making 230 PS 170 kilowatts won the 1953 Carrera Panamericana with Juan Manuel Fangio at the wheel. Ferrari followed with the Dino V6, initially developed as a 1.5 LDOHC V6 engine for Formula 2 at the end of 1955. The Dino V6 underwent several evolutions, including an increased engine displacement to 2,417 cc 147 cu in, for use in the Ferrari 246 Formula 1 car in 1958. The use of a wide 120 degrees bank angle is appealing for racing engine designers as it permits a low center of gravity. This design is even considered superior to the flat 6 in that it leaves more space under the engine for exhaust pipes, thus the crankshaft can be placed lower in the car. The Ferrari 156 built for new Formula 1 1.5L regulations used a Dyno V6 engine with this configuration. The Dyno V6 engine saw a new evolution in 1966 when it was adapted to road use and produced by a Ferrari Fiat joint venture for the Fiat Dino and Dino 206 GT. This car was made by Ferrari but sold under the brand Dino. This new version was redesigned by Aurelio Lampredi initially as a 65 degrees 2.0L V6 with an aluminum block but was replaced in 1969 by a 2.4L cast iron block version the Dino car was renamed the 246 GT. The Fiat Dino and Dino 246 GT were phased out in 1974, but 500 engines among the last built were delivered to Lancia, who was like Ferrari already under the control of Fiat. Lancia used them for the Lancia Stratos which would become one of the most successful rally cars of the decade. The Alfa Romeo V6 was designed in the 1970s by Giuseppe Busso, the first car to use them being the Alfa Romeo 6. The over-square V6, with aluminium alloy block and heads, has seen continuous use in road vehicles, from the Alfetta GT V6 onwards. The 164 introduced a 3.0L V6, a 2.0 V6 turbocharged in 1991 and in 1992, a 3.0 LDOHC 24-valve version. The Alpha 156 introduced a 2.5 LDOHC 24-valve version in 1997. The engine capacity was later increased to 3.2L 200 cu in, where it found application in the 156 GTA, 147 GTA, 166 GT, GTV and Spider 916. Production was discontinued in 2005. A notable racing use of the V6 engine was the Alfa Romeo 155 V6 Ti, designed for the 1993 Deutsche Terrenwagen Meisterschaft season and equipped with a 2.5L engine making a peak power of 490 PS 360 kilowatts, 480 horsepower at 11,900 revolutions per minute. Another influential V6 design was the Renault Gordini CH1 V6, designed by François Castaing and Jean-Pierre Boudy, and introduced in 1973 in the Alpine Renault A440. The CH1 was a 90 degrees cast iron block V6, similar to the mass-produced PRV engine in those two respects but otherwise dissimilar. It has been suggested that marketing purposes made the Renault Gordini V6 adopt those characteristics of the PRV in the hope of associating the two in the public's mind. Despite such considerations, this engine won the European 2L prototype championship in 1974 and several European Formula 2 titles. 
This engine was further developed in a turbocharged 2L version that competed in sports car and finally won the 24 Hours of Le Mans in 1978 with a Renault Alpine A442 chassis. The capacity of this engine was reduced to 1.5L to power the Formula One Renault RS01. Despite frequent breakdowns that resulted in the nickname of the Little Yellow Teapot, the 1.5L finally saw good results in 1979. Ferrari followed Renault in the turbo revolution by introducing a turbocharged derivative of the dyno design a 1.5L 120 degrees V6 with the Ferrari 126. However, the 120 degrees design was not considered optimal for the wing cars of the era and later engines used V angles of 90 degrees or less. Both Renault and Ferrari failed in their attempt to win the drivers' championship with V6 turbo engines. The first turbocharged engine to win the championship was the straight 4 BMW. They were followed by a new generation of Formula One engines, the most successful of these being the TAG V6 designed by Porsche and the Honda V6. This new generation of engines were characterized by odd V angles around 80 degrees. The choice of these angles was mainly driven by aerodynamic consideration. Despite their unbalanced designs these engines were both quickly reliable and competitive, this is generally viewed as a consequence of the quick progress of CAD techniques in that era. In 1989 Shelby tried to bring back the Canem series, using the Chrysler 3.3L V6 not yet offered to the general public as the powerplant in a special racing configuration making 255 horsepower 190 kilowatts. This was the same year that the Viper concept was shown to the public. Originally the plan was to produce two versions of this race car, a 255 horsepower, 190 kilowatts version and a 500 horsepower, 370 kilowatts model, the 255 horsepower, 190 kilowatts version being the entry circuit. The cars were designed to be a cheap way for more people to enter auto racing. Since all the cars were identical, the winners were to be the people with the best talent, not the team with the biggest pockets. The engines had Shelby seals on them and could only be repaired by Shelby's shop, ensuring that all the engines are mechanically identical. Only 100 of these 3.3s were ever built. Of these 100, 76 were put into Shelby Can-Am cars the only 76 that were ever sold. No significant amount of spare parts were produced, and the unsold engines were used for parts, spares. The Shelby-specific parts, such as the upper intake manifold, were never made available to the general public. According to a small article in the USA Today, in 1989, these cars were making 250 horsepower, 190 kilowatts. Stock versions introduced in 1990 produced 150 horsepower or 110 kilowatts and hitting 160 miles per hour, 260 kilometers per hour on the track. The engine itself was not that far from a standard production 3.3. The Shelby engine is only making about 50 horsepower, 37 kilowatts, more than the newest 3.3 factory engines from Chrysler. The Can-Am engine has a special Shelby Dodge upper intake manifold, a special Shelby Dodge throttle body, and a special version of the Mopar 3.3 PCM, which had this engine redlining at 6,800 revolutions per minute. Nissan also has a quite successful history of using V6s for racing in both IMSA and the JGTC. Development of their V6 for sports cars began in the early 1980s with the VG engine initially used in the Z31300ZX. The engine began life as a SOHC, turbocharged 3.0L power plant with electronic fuel injection, delivering 230 PS, 169 kilowatts. The VG30ET was later revised into the VG30DETT for the Z32300ZX in 1989. The VG30DETT sported both an additional turbocharger and an extra pair of camshafts, making the engine a genuine DOHC twin turbo V6 producing 300 PS 221 kilowatts. Nissan used both of these engines in its Ames racing program throughout the 1980s and 1990s, each producing well over 800 horsepower 600 kilowatts. In the Japan Grand Touring Car Championship, or JGTC, Nissan opted for a turbocharged version of its VQ30 making upwards of 500 horsepower 370 kilowatts to compete in the GT500 class. V6 turbos have been used in the IndyCar series since 2012, with Chevrolet and Honda currently supplying the engines. 
Lotus also made engines in the 2012 season, but pulled out at the end of the year. For 2013, the GP3 series introduced a 400 bhp naturally aspirated V6 engine developed by Advanced Engine Research for their second-generation car, the Dallara GP313. Three years later, in 2016, with the launch of the Dallara GP316, the air-manufactured engine was replaced by a Mechachrome naturally aspirated engine. The 2014 Formula One season included the return of the V6 engine to Formula One, in the form of a regulation-mandated, turbocharged 1.6L 90 degrees hybrid engine. This engine integrates the combustion engine with a mandated maximum output 161 bhp 120 kilowatts motor generator unit electric motor system consisting of a motor generator unit kinetic component which is the electric motor itself capable of energy recovery through regenerative braking and a motor generator unit heat component which is a similar system integrated into the turbocharging system to allow the elimination of turbo lag and additional system charging through the turbocharger once the turbine system is kept up at speed by exhaust gases. In 2018, the FIA Formula 2 Championship, formerly known as the GP2 Series, introduced a Mechachrome 3.4-liter turbocharged V6 engine to their new car, the Dallara F2 2018, replacing the aging 4.0-liter V8 naturally aspirated engine that was used since the inaugural GP2 Series season. In 2019, the FIA Formula 3 Championship, which was created when the GP3 Series and the FIA Formula 3 European Championship merged, will use the same Mechachrome 3.4-litre naturally aspirated V6 engine for their new car which was unveiled in November 2018. Motorcycle use Laverda showed a 996cc V6 engine motorcycle at the 1977 Milan show. The motorcycle was raced in the 1978 Bol d'Or. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Marine use. V6 engines are popular power plants in medium to large outboard motors. Equals <laughs> equals <laughs> notes. <laughs>